Night, baby. How you do this evening, ma'am? Oh, here you are. I've got another favor to ask of you. Sure. I need another horse put down. I think the insurance people are getting a little suspicious. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't explain. It's not one of mine. It's a friend of mine out in California. Oh, out in California. That might be all right. He's having a bit of a rough time in the stock market. Needs to free up some equity. You live out in Hollywood. You ever been out there? No. I never have. And I'm sure he's got some friends he knows might make the trip worthwhile as well. When would he like me to come out? Well, before racing season starts. I've got a few things to settle up here. But I suppose I could bring out a few horses and run a few races while I'm out there. I'm sure he's going to make it very much worth your while. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, my husband and I are going out to dinner this evening. You've got the number to call when you're done here. Yes, ma'am. I'll call you and tell you what happened. And then you'll call the insurance company, and they'll call me back. This is before. All right. Just as before. That's him, Harley Ames. Some circles known as the Sandman. What's he do? Murders racehorses for the insurance money. Chris Haddock. He's been a trainer for almost 20 years. He figured out a long time ago that if he didn't like the way a horse is running, he'd kill him and buy another one with the insurance money. Pretty soon, other people started figuring out how good he was at getting away with it. He started doing it for them for a percentage of the insurance payout. Guy kills that many horses and he's still got no proof. Well, that's his talent. He's an artist at masking these things and making it look like an accident. He can break a leg, collapse a lung. A horse will drop dead a colic and not even a pathologist can tell. You know, they're fine one day and dead the next morning. And he's got a legit cover as a trainer who owns a few horses. Problem is, wherever he shows up, horses start dropping. And you think he's come out here to run the scam? Yeah, except for maybe this time I got a good shot at catching him. Why now? Well, he comes from a close-knit community back east where everybody knows everybody and nobody's talking. This is his first time out on the coast. I don't know, Joe. I was thinking we could run some kind of sting on him. I know I can't do this alone, and frankly, my insurance company is sick of me promising I'm going to catch this guy and not deliver him. 
I don't care if I lose my job. I just want this guy to stop killing horses. All right, maybe we can help. You got a cover already? Yeah, yeah, I can introduce you. He thinks I'm a small-time trainer just like he is on the same circuit chasing purses around the country. And he's got no idea you're an insurance investigator. No, man, none. Come on, we work side by side for years. You know I'm good. I know you used to be. But this ain't an easy thing you're asking, Mike. It'll have to be a big thing to pull this off. Let me talk it over with the boss. I'll see if I can put something together. I'll get back to you. I'd appreciate it. Oh, wait a minute. Tell your company it won't be cheap. They'll have to foot the bill with us if I say yes. Just let me know soon, Joe. Before he starts doing it out here. You know about horses? Absolutely nothing. Knew it. This is the name of the vet we're working with. They'll take you on rounds today. You start tomorrow. I got a day to study this. That's all. To play a vet. It's a bit. You can pull it off. Listen, Joe. It's time for us to talk again about me getting some time off in between gigs, right? I just need a break sometimes. Weren't you the guy that was asking for more responsibility? I'm getting mixed signals here. Yeah, I'm not talking about responsibility, Joe. I'm talking about prep time. Holiday time. I need to blow some of the oil out of my engine. Some of these characters are starting to blur because I'm not getting enough time in between them. Well, I'm sorry, D, but I'm working off the schedule the bad guys give me. Come on. I got man. no prep time either. My dance card is full. Yeah, help me get through this one. I'll get you some time off. You need to develop some new people is all I'm saying. You know, develop the crew, man. I'm looking all the time, but I come up short in the talent pool. You know anybody? You hear of anybody you like? Let me know. I'll bring them in. I'll see if they can handle it. You want me to start looking? Yeah. You see somebody you think might be a good fit? You bring them in, I'll take a look at them, I'll see if they can handle it. All right, then, I'll start looking. You're working at the track tomorrow. Marcy will have the details. I want you to use Marcy on this. It's a brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of it? See you tomorrow. <laughs> Lady in the Jaguar. You can't miss her. What's her story? Her name's Heather Monaghan. Her husband died, left her a small fortune and a horse. Now the fortune's worth uh, 10 cents on the dollar, and she's stuck with this horse It's sick, trying to sell it. She'd be perfect. Heather, this is Mike. Mike, how you doing? Good, I'm good, how you doing? Well, my husband just died and left me a ton of money. What could be better? Where are you from? San Francisco, but I live in Los Angeles now. I moved down because I thought the change of locale would help lift my spirit. Why do you want your racehorse killed? It was a gift from my husband. He got it at the height of the internet boom. But now that I've inherited stocks that are worth pennies on the dollar, my financial advisor told me to sell some of my toys. You know, the horse was fun, but I prefer two-legged athletes. <laughs> it was perfect. Good scenario, Joe. Right. Go ahead, go talk to Tony. He's the barn manager. He's expecting you and would love to show you your stall. All right. Mike, nice meeting you. It's good meeting you. I'll see you around. Hope so. So what's her deal? East Coast, last several years, been with us a couple of months. I'm breaking her in bit by bit. Good kid, she gets it done. Seems a little too independent for you, Joe. Well, you see, my car loyalty outweighs her independence. She's in it for the long haul. Marcy, you remember Mike. I think we met once when I was still with the Bureau. Yeah, I remember. You're freelancer now, right? That's right, yeah, mostly insurance investigations right now. Cool. So what do you want me to do today? You're a small-time gambler, watching the horses, clocking their times. Keep an eye on this guy over here in the hat. Is it all right if I get noticed? Yeah. Just keep it loose, you would talk stuff. Come on, you got work to do. There's our doctor. He any good? A lot better than you were. <laughs> Been with me five years. You don't like doing street much anymore. Oh, don't blame him. The street gets old real fast. Well, it ain't easy finding good people. It ain't easy keeping them. Look at you. Put a few years into you and you quit. I quit because you rode me too hard. I rode you too hard because you wouldn't listen. All right, I tell you what. 
I apologize for quitting without giving you proper notice, but I'm not sorry I left. I like the independence and the money's a hell of a lot better. But you still have to come to me on the hard ones, don't you? Doctor, come meet an old friend of mine. How you doing? Pleasure to meet you. Dr. Dude. Henry Love. Love. Doctor of Veterinary Medicine. I'm a recent graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. I'm a large animal veterinarian, originally from New Orleans. New in Los Angeles, looking for greener pastures. Okay, sounds good. Thanks for doing this. I know you didn't get much notice. No, well, I'm trying to get up to speed as fast as I can. You know how it is. I do, and I appreciate it. It's nothing. You'll be fine. Come on, let's go see the horse. Be good working with you. Likewise. Take it easy. Her name is Give Daddy Some Sugar. She came to us courtesy of a drug lord eager to knock a little time off ten year a bit. She's a two-year-old. Out of a pair of stakes horses. Showed a lot of early promise. Good. Great. I love the horse. So what's your story? I'm Miss Monaghan's groom. Just trying to save up enough money to eventually go to vet school. So for now, I'm just working here part time. I'm going to take Sugar out on the track if you want to see her run. I'd love to. That'd be great. So are you ready to kick this play into gear? Anytime. You got a good group of people here, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, he met with three trainers. He's just checking out horses, shooting the breeze, and getting information. Yeah, he's on his way to the stables now. Bye. I don't know what's wrong. You know, she just seems really listless. She gets winded really early. Well, I'll try and see if uh, the vet can come down as soon as possible. Take a look at her. He's a Lake Charger. He tends to get bunked around a lot at the start. He needs as much work in the starting gate as uh, he can possibly give. Yes, they're all working on the gate. Excuse me. Excuse me, have you seen Dr. Love around? Has he been around this morning? Well, I'm afraid I wouldn't know him to see him. Oh, he's a veterinarian. I'm Heather, by the way, Heather Monaghan. I'm right next door. Early Ames, pleasure. <laughs> and who's this handsome devil? Uh, it's a little bit of heaven. She just got off the truck, so she's not feeling her best. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have to find the vet. Seems my sugar's not feeling too well either. Oh, there he is. Dr. Love, Henry. How am I doing? Right. I think you just took the bait. Hey, Mike. Hey, Doc. You ready to do your bit today? Yeah, man, always ready. You know, it gets tough sometimes, I remember. And I know how Joe can be. Son of a bitch sometimes. Yeah, well, he's got a lot of pressure on you, huh? Yeah, no doubt, a lot of cases depending on him. I know how hard it got for me to keep going. You know, you ever think about going private, freelancing? You give me a call, I could use somebody like you. Good bread, work as much as you want, benefits, the whole nine yards. Well, when you say good bread, how much are we talking about? A good operator can make 200 grand a year. 200 Gs? <laughs> I don't want you to think I'm raiding, because I'm not. Yeah. I just recognize the look in your eye. And I just want you to know there's life beyond the bureau. All right, well, thanks, man. If I get tired of it, I'll definitely let you know. Fair enough. Good luck today. All right, man, thanks. Hey, hey, Mike, make sure I get your number before you leave town, all right? Good enough. Paul Dowsett, Paul track maintenance. Paul Dowsett. You were on Joe's crew for quite a while. Yeah, almost six years. It was, uh, it was good. We got along all right. I just got burned out doing too many jobs. Burning the candles at both ends. Yeah, you could say that. You know, the problem is once you get any good at doing this, the Bureau tends to use you all the time. You know, if I could give you any advice, it'd be watch out for that. 
Make sure you get your breaks, take your holidays. Hey, Joe. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. How's it going? It's going. Harley's down on the track clocking his horse. I think now's a good time. Oh, good, let's get over there. Want to hit the backstory? We met Heather a couple days ago. We heard she was thinking about selling her horse. And you two guys are partners and you own a couple of horses together. Right? We're looking to pick up a good horse for a price. All right, well, I'll introduce the play and I'll leave you guys to work it. Good, let's do this. I got her for 200 grand, but she hasn't really done much. Maybe you guys can do something with her. Which one is she? Give Daddy some sugar. She's just coming around the bend at the quarter pole. She's got a nice stride. Likes the corners. I can't tell. I got to see him in a race. See, they got any heart. That's all I look for. Hello, Harley. I didn't recognize you. How are you? Sure. Thank you. How about yourself? Very well. You have anything out here this morning? Yeah. That one going by right there. Very nice. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce you. This is... Joe. Joe Clements. How you doing? Good. And this is Mike. Mike and Joe are thinking of buying Give Daddy Some Sugar off me. Hey, Harley, I thought it was you. It's me, Mike Dupree. How you doing? Hey, Mike, sure. What about you out here? Yeah, same thing as you, probably. Just looking to pick up a few purses, you know, put some food on the table. <laughs> you two already know each other. Yeah, we go way back. Uh, last time was, what, uh, fairgrounds in New Orleans, right? Yeah, that's right. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Good luck out here. Miss Mulligan, it's always a pleasure. you excuse me. I have to go talk to my jock. We'll see you around, Harley. Well, you two gentlemen know how to find me, so just give me a call. Nice to meet you. All right. We'll be in touch. Harley, nice seeing you again. You too, ma'am. So what do you think, Joe? I think I want to take another look. Why don't we ask Harley? Hey, Harley. Harley, you got a minute? Sure. What can I do for you? Miss Modigan's horse. Give Daddy some sugar. You like her? Well, I check out to see if she's sound. Oh, you. I heard the vet, uh, coming over to take a look at her for a touch of colic. Colic? That's not good. That's what I heard. Well, thanks for the heads up, Harley. We'll see you around. OK. You bet. What do you think? Well, let's get him used to us being around. Come back at him in a couple of days. Hey, Rhonda. It's good to finally meet you, just like Martha described. Hello, Harley. How was your trip? Oh, it's pretty good. One of the didn't take too well to travel, but he's coming back slowly. Well, I wanted to thank Martha for introducing us, so I called her last night. She sounds like she's doing well. Yeah, she seems to be. She's a wonderful lady. Hmm. May I buy you a cup of coffee? You bet. Her name is Rhonda Lettingham. She's worth tens of millions and has a stable full of horses. Her husband runs a film studio. She is high profile society page from coast to coast. This could be the person he was sent to meet with. So this is your intro. Yeah, I'll sell it, don't worry. Just another piece of the setup, I understand. Hey, it's just a bit. I heard you, Joe. So I don't want you to hit it so hard. That's the way I'm planning on it. That's where you're gonna get it, okay? But I will point out, that if I had more time to work up the research, it'd be better. Yeah. It'd always be better. Any advice? No, you're good. Just do your thing nice and natural like you always do. Thanks. You got great instincts. Just follow. Here he comes. You start. You ready? She's been fussy and miserable all night, and she's not eating anything. I don't know what it is. Yeah, well, it's probably a touch of the colic. Yeah, we should keep a good eye on her, and you call me if she gets any worse. Is she going to be able to race? I don't think so. I wouldn't recommend it anyway. She, you know, she needs some time to recuperate. I don't believe it. It's the start of the season. She hasn't even run one race, and already she's sick. Sorry, ma'am. Not right now. Can you take a look at my horse here, Doc? I'd love to, but, you know, I got some appointments backing up. Can I, can I look at her tomorrow? Anytime. I'll be here. All uh, right, I'll see you tomorrow now. He's all set. Harley knows the vet's seen the horse, determined it's Calic. He knows Heather's lost her interest. I think we're ready to go. Okay, good. 
You're on, Mike. It's up to you. I know. If Harley don't take the hook, this whole thing falls apart. Hey, Joe, I'm aware, all right? You don't need to wind me up. How do I know that? It's been a while. I don't know if you still have it. I've been on this guy for two years. I think I know what I'm doing. So do it. Here I go. Break a leg. Hey, Harley. Hey, Mike. You uh, you got a minute? Sure. What can I do for you? Why don't we go over here where we can talk? You know, uh, Miss Monaghan? She owns the horse in the stall next to yours. Oh, yeah. She's quite the lady. Yeah. Well, uh, here's the situation. She wants to get rid of her horse. But I don't advise you buy that horse, Mike. I don't think it's sound. No, I know, I know, no. She came to me and she was upset. And, well, she wanted to know if I'd be interested in making a little bit of money if I helped her. Oh, yeah? Well, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about taking the horse down. And I told her I didn't know much about it myself, but maybe I could talk to somebody who did. I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, Harley. I've been on the circuit for a couple years, you know? I hear things. You have the reputation of you know, the man to go to in a situation like this. Well, I'm not your man, Mike. I can't help you on this. Well, then I got to do it myself. I mean, I got, I got absolutely no money left. I mean, my partner doesn't know it, but I, I lost all of his money. I sold my truck yesterday. I'll have to sell my trailer tomorrow. I can do this, right? I'll just, I'll just, I'll just puncture the lung or something. Just slow down. Slow down. You do this wrong. You're going to bring a lot of people into this. You don't want. It's not going to be wrong, Harley. I got, I got the vet in my pocket. I can pay him off. He'll confirm anything I ask him to. I looked him up. He's already been fired off of two tracks. He needs the work. Believe me, I have him right where I need him. How long you known this lady? I've known her a while. <sighs> OK. I want 20% of what the insurer pays out. If you can make that deal, I'll take care of it for you. Can you do it tonight? I need you to cover my back. Whatever you want, whatever you want. And, and I don't need a lot of the money, you know, just, just a taste. Just be here at midnight. When? Kill the horse tonight. I gotta tell you, at first, he didn't want to do it. I was like dying there, and then all of a sudden, man, he just changed his mind. He says he'll do it, but right. I gotta be there. Well, what happened with Harley just now was a dress rehearsal. Tonight, the critics come, and you're gonna have to deliver this guy. Yeah, I know, Joe. doing this evening? Good. Checking on my two-year-old. So? Oh, not too bad. Just gonna head back to the tack room, see if I can't get a little rest. Take it easy. Take it. Hey, Harley. How we doing? Go up to the end of the row. Keep your eye open. Okay, how are you gonna do this? Go up there, keep your eye open, check everything out, make sure nobody comes. That's it? That's all you want me to do? That's it. Hey, set them down a little bit.
Don't plug it in, Harley. I'll do the same to you. Hey there, Joe. What's going on? I'm just trying to get some uh, light in this barn. Take a look at that horse. He's got quite an infection. Oh, man. You're done, Harley. FBI. You're going to be facing multiple fraud charges on this. I guess you finally got me. Yeah, I guess we did. So now what are you going to do? You uh, going to toss me in jail to away your key? That's not going to stop these folks from doing what they please, you know? Yeah, I know that. So maybe you work with us and we drop some of those charges. What I got to do? Tell us who was involved in all these insurance frauds, past and present. If I cooperate, I'll get the charges dropped. Well, that's between your lawyer and the DA. But if you work with us, Maybe they could reduce your jail time. They'd be better for you, I know that. How long you been a horseman, Harley? My whole life. I was born in a barn. And what the hell happened? Where well, you could put the horses down like you do? I grew up seeing animals slaughtered. My family were farmers. You know, it's a pretty normal situation for a lot of folks in this country. Hell, I don't think killing horses for money is a normal situation. You might want to take that up with the folks at the rendering plants. All right, look, let's just talk about what you're going to do for us now. Fine, sure. I mean, I got no particular desire to spend time living in a cage. What do you want me to do? Exactly what you've been doing. Only I'm your new partner. The three of us, you, me, and Mike. We have our own little syndicate. We own a few horses together. You still get your business like you do on the side, which is how you're going to help us get a case against some of your friends. They're not my friends. It's a business. I make a living. Then you should have no problem helping us gather the necessary evidence. No, I got no problem. So who out here has come to you for help in putting their horses down? So far, only uh, Rhonda letting them. But I know she's got a circle of friends that uh, are interested in my services. At least that's what she was hinting at. What'd she ask you to do exactly? She's got a horse she doesn't like anymore. What do you mean? It's not running well or what? No, it's a good horse, actually. It's coming along fine. But she says uh, her husband's having a rough ride in the stock market. So she's asking you to do this on behalf of her husband? That's the way I understand it, yeah. Who owns the horse, her or her husband? Her husband and several friends. It's a syndicate, kind of like uh, you, me, and Mike here. Mm -hmm. They have several horses together. Are his friends aware of her intentions? I mean, are they asking you to do this? I don't know. She's the only one I've spoken to. But I'd imagine they understand. It's just a business to them, just like it was for me. I'd send her back to the farm. Give her another year. Let her develop. Then we put her on the circuit. Hey, you're probably right. Miss Ladyham, hello. Well, hello, Harley. Nice to see you again. How's that two-year-old doing? Well, I put her in the second race on opening day, see how she does. Uh, this is my friend Elaine. Elaine, this is Harley, my hello. friend Martha's trainer. Hi, it's a pleasure. Uh, this is my partner, Joe. Hello. Pleased to meet you. Hello, Joe. That one there yours? Oh, uh, our families are partners in it together. Looks good. Oh, we have our hopes. Can I talk to you for a second? Of course, excuse me. So are you running any horses here, Joe? Yeah, Harley and I have a few. Looking to maybe pick up a couple more. I see something I like. What do you like? Well, I like a nice lean filly. You know what they say. Lean horse, long ride. Is that what they say? Yes, ma'am, where I come from, they do. <laughs> she made the offer. She wants a horse put down. What'd you say? Just like you told me. I said I'd like to bet to go see the horse. I told her it'd be a good idea if she started using this bet because he'd be the one to see the horse afterwards to see if there was any foul play. And she said, fine. All right. Said she'd be here tomorrow at 10. Good. Good job, Harley. You fellas, excuse me. I got some business to attend to. All right, stay in touch. See you guys around. All right, tomorrow time we send the vet over. Well, 
I say he looks pretty fit to me. And if he keeps training the way he has been, he should be fine come race day. Oh, thank you, doctor. I appreciate it. Yeah, just fine. Now, if you need to reach me at any time, just give me a call. All right? My service can reach me 24 hours a day. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. He's a lovely animal. Mm. Just lovely. Mm. Yeah. How we doing, boss? Well, we're doing fine, Harley. Apparently, Rhonda's buying your story. All you gotta do is nod, smile, and tell them what they want to hear. I'm glad you're enjoying the game. Just tell me what to do. Well, tell Rhonda you can't kill the horse in the stalls. She'll have to take it back to her estate. But she's expecting me to do it here. Well, she'll understand when you explain about the tragedy that happened in the stalls last night. These things happen, okay? You know, we had to put her down as quickly as we could. I, she didn't need to suffer. I know, I know, I understand. I'll be all right. Yeah, I guess you're out of a job now, too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, you find another job. I mean, people around the barn is always looking for a good groom, you know? I needed the money for full semester. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll ask around myself, okay? Oh, thanks. All right, okay. all right. I'm just gonna muck out the stall. No, 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 you go get some fresh air. Huh? Yeah, you're right. Feel better, okay? <laughs> Had to put her horse down last night. She broke her leg in the stall. Oh, that's terrible. That's so sad. Yeah, well, these things happen. Look for Mr. Ames. I think I saw him around back. Yeah, I am. Thank you. Well, how's your horse feeling? Oh, much better. Thank you very much. All righty. Feeling all right? Yeah, I'm all right. How about you? Uh, I feel like I'm vamping out here. You no, know, I'm playing the vet. I'm not getting the kind of time I need to study up on this character and do this thing right. Yeah, well, you're working a lot. It's not the work I'm on. You know, I love the work. I just I'd hate to be put in a position to blow a sting because I didn't do my homework, you know? If we get made, it's on us. I don't feel comfortable about doing it here at these stables. I'm a new face. People don't know me. But what? What really concerns me is that a horse right next to mine was put down last night. Yeah, I heard. I just spoke to the vet. I don't want to do it here. Well, I really do need this done pretty quickly. I, I'm afraid we're getting a little pressure from the bank to make some payments. I, I prefer that we did do it here. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I don't feel good about it. Didn't you say you had some stables? You want to do it there? Well, yeah, it's better than doing it here. I don't think that my husband would feel comfortable doing it on our property. And I know he doesn't want any investigators out there. And the violence? I guarantee you there will be no violence, no investigations. I have a discreet method that makes it look just like colic. No broken bones, no nothing. Even if they had an autopsy, it's going to come back colic. Well, that sounds possible. I'd also like my associate to handle this. The more distance we keep between us, the better. I, I agree, absolutely. Who were you thinking of using? A trainer. Get friend of mine. Thanks, Joe. You met him. You don't like, like old times. Think about coming back. Bureau doesn't pay me enough to bring me back. Well, there'll always be a spot for you if you change your mind. I appreciate it, but you know, I like what I'm doing now. I like being my own boss. Uh, you just don't like taking orders from me. Well, let's just say I like freelancing. Come on, I'm easy to work with. It's Seth Darnell. You're not easy, Joe. You got your own way of doing things, and I think maybe you got too much on your plate to be diplomatic sometimes. Well, I should be more diplomatic. Well, yeah, it wouldn't hurt, especially if you want to keep your people around. Joe. Rhonda called. She's moving the horse back to her stable. She wants it done. Yeah, she wants it done. You're going to meet her there tomorrow. Listen, I got to go, but uh, I thought you'd want to hear that. Cool.
Yes, sir. Joe Clements, this is Mike Rodenham. We're, we're here to see a lady. We're about here to see a... Mrs. Lettingham about a horse she's got for sale. Uh, yes, sir. We were expecting you. Just take this road up to the stables. You can park in back. Mrs. Lettingham will meet you there. Thank you. So this is the horse? Mm hmm The bay. And the stables are empty at night? Yeah, we have a property manager, but we're having a party up at the house this evening. He'll be parking cars. They're back road? Yeah, if you follow the road all the way down, you'll see the exit. I'll make sure the gate is unlocked. OK. Um, show me a horse's stall. Don't want to confuse the horses in the dark. Thanks for cooperating, Harley. You know, with any luck, we'll wrap this thing up tonight. I'm glad I could help. Hey, listen, I'm not trying to reduce my jail time or anything, but if you ever need my help again, let me know, will you? Uh, listen, uh, I never got any pleasure out of killing horses. It's just the way I grew up. I watched my daddy work his fingers to the bone. 50 years and come up with nothing to show for it. I saw where the money was, and I decided I wanted something for a change. I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling bad about it now. But maybe I could feel better about myself if, uh, if you let me. OK, Arlene, OK. Let's finish this thing, and then we'll talk about the other. Joe, it's empty. Okay, looks like all the guests have arrived. Hey. This is it, man. It's gonna get it all. It's like old times. Don't remind me. Okay. Break a leg. Whoa, take it easy. We started looking for foreign financing last year, but there wasn't much available. This year, we have a much Smaller slate, so the budgets are bigger. Tell them what happened with the tax issue today. Oh, <laughs> this morning I flew up to Sacramento. Check in with our new governor. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Answer the door. What the hell is that racket? Where's Rhonda? Where's Rhonda? Louisa, what the hell's going on out there? You got a rock for something? Who are you? What do you uh, want? Who's, who's, Jack, call the police right don't, now. Don't, don't do that. Don't call the police. Joe, what happened? What went wrong? Them horse got away from me. He clipped me pretty good. Damn things running around in circles, dragging a broken leg behind him. Jack, what's happened? They're having the horse killed. Something must have gone wrong. I, I need a gun and put, put him down. Roger, you have a gun in the study. You better get the car. Call me. We'll get our story straight on this. Come on, man. Let's go. Okay. Careful. It's loaded. Safety's on. Oh. Hey, man, I, I don't know anything about guns. You're going to have to put this horse down yourself. Roger, just go with him. Come on, dear. OK. I'm so sorry. Please, please, let's just keep this amongst ourselves. What happened? I was sticking to the plan, trying to break his leg. 
Horse got away from me, ran me up against the wall. I, I think I broke a rib. You're not supposed to break its leg. You're supposed to put it down quietly. Quietly? You ever put a horse down? You think they just roll over peacefully? I thought it was understood that you were going to electrocute the horse, and it would look like natural causes. Nobody said anything to me about breaking its leg. His leg's broke now, ain't it? You and your friends want to do the dirty work yourself? All right, all right, just, just calm down. No, we don't want to do the dirty work. That's why I hired you to do it, so we could avoid all this. Say that again? I said that's why we hired you to kill the damn horse. You're supposed to be the professional. All right, then. Give me back the gun. Repeat your name for the court one more time, clearly, into the microphone. What the hell is this? This is a setup? You set me up? Yes, sir. We did. Let's go. Can you get a statement from Harley for the insurance company? Then he's all yours, all right? Yeah, good. It was good working with you again, Joe. If you ever have anything you need me for, you know, something you guys can't handle yourselves, why don't you give me a call? I owe you. All right, I will. It's good seeing you.